Is this happening to you? Then you're in the right place for video game training. In this video, I'm going to show you how to destroy the Nameless King and his pet. First of all, we'll take a look at the equipment and the items that we'll be using, and then we'll cover the King of the Storm, and then we'll cover the Nameless King. If you want to be an absolute legend and support the channel, then make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. My name is Azavar or Azza, now let's get into the video. Let's jump into the equipment that we'll be using. Our weapons are the Sharp Sellsword Twin Blades plus 10, and a sharp version of a weapon's damage will increase the higher our character's dexterity is so our character has a high dexterity. We'll be using the Grass Crest Shield on our backs for increased stamina regen. We've got the Assassin's Armor set on. Don't worry too much about your armor set, as long as you've got a medium or a light equipment load so you can dodge roll. We've got the Claranthi Ring for increased stamina regen. Lloyd's Sword Ring that boosts our attack when our HP is full. Pontiff's Right Eye that boosts attacks as long as attacking persists. And we're also using the Thunder Stoneplate Ring. This is so we take less damage from the Lightning. You can pick up the Thunder Stoneplate Ring from the Arch Dragon's Peak. Just follow this path in round here from the Dragonkin Mausoleum Bonfire. This is the bonfire that you get teleported to after you defeat the Ancient Wyvern. You'll find it at the top of these ladders. We might use some green blossoms every now and again, but don't worry too much about those. When we're fighting against the King of the Storm, which is kind of like the dragon bird thing, we'll be imbuing our weapons with lightning, so we'll be using the Gold Pine Bundles or the Gold Pine Resin. And then when we get to the Nameless King, we'll be using the Charcoal Pine Bundles or the Charcoal Pine Resin. And we can also use Human Pine Resin against the Nameless King as well. Because he's weak to fire, and dark and of course the king of the storm is weak to lightning you don't have to use this exact setup i'm just showing you what we're working with for this video okay so first we'll take a look at the king of the storm or the bird dragon looking thing king of the storm is weak to lightning so apply your lightning resin first of all we'll just establish the safe zone which is just a little bit in front of the bird's beak i'd also recommend not using lock on for this section of the fight so if you place yourself just a little bit in front of the beak you'll be able to place your camera so you can see the bird and the nameless king on the screen at the same time this way you'll be able to see what attacks are coming your way because some of the attacks come from the bird itself and some of the attacks come from the nameless king so you can keep an eye on both of them with the king of the storm you'll want to focus on attacking the bird's head or neck this is where you'll do the most damage if you can do try to make your attacks land on its head as opposed to its neck because if you keep attacking the head it'll eventually build up stagger damage and then stagger the bird and ideally you want to be aiming for a stagger if possible let's take a look at the nameless king's horizontal attacks with his horizontal attacks you'll see him hold his weapon up towards the sky a little bit and then he'll swing it horizontally just roll through the swing to avoid it he then might do another horizontal swing in the opposite direction so keep an eye out for that and after the second one he can sometimes do an overhead slam he can choose to do any combination of these horizontal attacks and overhead slams so sometimes overhead slam into horizontal strikes and sometimes horizontal strikes into overhead slams so just be on your guard and keep your eyes peeled with the overhead slam attack you can roll forward through it and at the end of the roll try and place yourself towards the bird's head and after you've got up from your roll you can deliver one or two attacks safely he can also do a variant of this overhead slam where he charges his weapon with lightning. This lightning charge variant will take a little bit longer for the slam to come down. If you're quite close, you'll want to roll forward in towards the head whilst avoiding the weapon slam and lightning on the floor. Or if you find yourself a little bit further away, you'll want to roll away in the opposite direction whilst also avoiding the slam and the lightning. If you do find yourself rolling forward towards the head, you can also get yourself in some extra attacks after you finish your roll. So make sure to get these in if you can do. Next, we'll take a look at the fly up in the air, throw down lightning and then swoop attack. So with this attack, it's usually a good idea to try and lock on to the Nameless King. He'll fly around you for a few seconds and then throw down lightning. Just roll through the lightning to avoid it. And then as you see the bird get ready to swoop down, prepare yourself and then roll forward through the attack. There's a few seconds between dodging through the lightning and then dodging through the swoop attack. So you could use those few seconds in between those attacks to perhaps heal yourself up or use an item if you need to. After he's done the swoop attack, he'll then do kind of like a 180 spin and land on the floor. You could actually use this opportunity to attack if you want to, to make it easier, lock onto the bird's head as he's doing that 180 spin towards the back of you. And then you can sprint up towards his head and deliver an attack or two. You can also do the 180 attack whilst he's on the ground. So he'll kind of flip himself from in front of your character to behind your character. And once he's done this 180 whilst he's on the ground, he'll always follow that up with some kind of attack. A lot of the times this will be a horizontal attack 
with his weapon, but sometimes it can be other attacks as well. You'll be able to see when he's about to do the 180 because the bird will kind of pull its head back a little bit and look like it's about to jump forward. If you're quick when you see this animation, you can run up to the bird's head and get in one extra attack. Next, we'll take a look at the standing fire breath attack. With this one, you'll be able to see the bird pull its head back really far. Almost kind of looks like it's got sudden neck pain, which it actually might do as it's got a lot of fire inside of its neck. So when you see its head pull back really far, and it will also be towards the right of your screen if you're looking towards the bird, he's about to shoot loads of fire from his mouth. So ideally, you want to run towards the side of its head and you can actually get in loads of attacks whilst you're here. It's usually about four attacks that you can get in, sometimes five if you're lucky. And because you can get in quite a lot of damage, Damage here it's quite common that you might get a stagger as well once again just make sure that your attacks are directed at the head if you can do as opposed to the neck a couple of extra things to look out for here if you get a bit too close to the bird which is kind of past his head towards the nameless king there's a few different attacks that you can do and these attacks will try to push you out from underneath the bird there's one where the nameless king will do a very quick thrust with his weapon this is insanely hard to dodge as it's almost instant you can dodge roll through this if you do see it in time and manage to roll to dodge that one you'll have to have very quick reaction speeds another one is the bird will fly high up into the sky and breathe fire down towards the ground with that one you just want to run away and you'll avoid the fire and the third one is quite similar where the bird will fly up into the sky and kind of push a gust of wind towards you you'll see the bird kind of flap his wings a few times and then the gust will come towards you if you time your roll correctly you'll be able to roll forward and through it if you want to avoid all three of those attacks completely then just don't get too close to the bird's feet feet or don't go too far past the bird's head so if you keep yourself around the front of the beak just in front of the bird that's the best and safest place to be a bit of info about staggering the bird if you do manage to get the stagger on the bird it will fall down to the floor so make sure to run up and press your attack button to deliver a critical strike and some good damage once you've taken care of the king of the storm we move on to the main act the nameless king the Nameless King is weak to fire and dark, so apply fire or dark to your weapon at the start of this phase. A lot of the time with the Nameless King, we're going to focus on dodging his attacks and looking out for two main opportunities for us to get in our attacks, which I'll point out in just a second. For the vast majority of the Nameless King's attacks, you'll need to teach yourself to delay your roll ever so slightly in order to make sure that you dodge the attack, as most, but not all of his attacks are quite slow and delayed. The Nameless King will usually start off with his shockwave attacks. This is where he blasts a gust of wind towards you. He usually does a horizontal attack and then a vertical attack. So just roll forward through the horizontal and roll to your left or to the right to avoid the vertical. And then he's most likely to follow that up with a forward thrust towards you. With this thrust, he has his weapon towards his side. As you see him readying up this attack, count to two and then roll on the two to avoid the attack. We'll call this thrust attack, thrust attack one. He also has another forward thrust that is very similar to this, but it's slightly different. With this different thrust, you'll see that his weapon is raised higher than it is with the previous thrust. With this one, you'll want to roll slightly later than the previous thrust. This thrust variant we'll call thrust two. And with thrust two, you'll want to roll around about two and a half seconds to avoid the attack. So thrust one is roll on two seconds. And thrust two is roll on two and a half seconds. The attack that you'll see the most often with the Nameless King is his horizontal slashes. With these standard horizontal attacks, they're quite slow and delayed. So you'll need to train yourself to slightly delay your roll when you see these coming. The delay is round about half a second. So as you see the animation coming in for these horizontal attacks, try to force yourself to delay your roll just slightly and this way you should avoid the attacks. Usually I try to lock on to the Nameless King and be quite close to him whilst moving towards our right hand side, which is the Nameless King's left hand side. So kind of traveling in an anti-clockwise direction whilst we're locked on. By being a little bit closer to him, it usually stops him from doing those thrust attacks that we mentioned earlier, thrust attack one and thrust attack two. So it takes those attacks out of the equation. However, keep Keep in mind that he can also do a standing thrust attack, which he usually does after two horizontal swipes. And this standing thrust attack we'll call thrust attack three. And after he does the standing thrust attack, this is the perfect time for us to get in our damage. So if you're looking for the best and the safest way to put in your attack, 
after this standing thrust attack is your time to do it. You'll notice that after he does this standing thrust attack, he kind of takes a second or two to bring his weapon back in again. So this is our perfect prime time to attack. You could also use this time to heal up if you are low on health or apply another fire resin or dark resin after this thrust three. Just be aware on this standing thrust attack that he can sometimes do this thrust attack multiple times in a row before he finishes up. So a lot of the time he would just do this thrust attack one time, but just keep your eyes open because he can just keep going with it. You'll know when he finishes up because he keeps his weapon extended out in front of him for a bit longer. And once again, it'll take about one or two seconds to pull his weapon back in again. And like I mentioned before, this is your prime time and safest time to attack. So make sure to attack one or two times here. You can also do a jumping forward horizontal slash. And with this one, once again, just roll forward to dodge the attack. If he does this particular jumping forward variant of this slash, after you've rolled to dodge the attack, as long as you're walking backwards away from the Nameless King, this should give you enough time to heal up or use a fire or dark resin. Another attack that you can do is a standing overhead slam attack. He usually does this whilst you're close to him. This is another attack that will allow us to get in our attack and punish him. His standing overhead slam attack is quite fast. I would still delay your roll ever so slightly when you see the animation. Once again, for most of the Nameless King attacks, you want to delay your roll slightly. After he's done this overhead slam attack, this is another safe time to get in our attack. Attacks. Usually you'll have time to get in one or two attacks here. You'll also want to watch out for the wind that comes from his weapons after his attacks. So just be aware of this as sometimes it can knock you over. You can also do a standing overhead slam where his weapon is charged with lightning. This one you want to dodge out of the way of the weapon slam just before the weapon is slamming into the ground. About a second after this weapon has slammed into the floor, there'll be bolts of lightning that shoot out in multiple directions that start from where the weapon slammed into the floor. Depending on your positioning, you'll want to do slightly different things. So if you're a bit further away from the Nameless King when he's doing this attack, you'll want to be dodge rolling through the slam in a backwards diagonal left or a backwards diagonal right direction and then just keep moving a little bit to your character's left or to your character's right to make sure that you avoid the bolts of lightning that shoot out afterwards or if you're closer to the nameless king when he does this attack you want to roll diagonally forwards and right, keeping once again in that anti-clockwise motion around the Nameless King. By pulling yourself towards the diagonal right a little bit, you'll also avoid that lightning bolt that shoots from the floor as well. With the lightning bolts that shoot from the floor, one of those bolts will usually shoot directly towards the Nameless King, and there'll be one that's traveling in the opposite direction away from the Nameless King as well. So just try to keep the directions of the bolts in mind after the slam. Next, we'll cover the aerial plunge attack. This one I call the three second and aerial plunge. He'll usually do this attack if there's some distance between you and the Nameless King. He'll jump up into the air, ready his weapon, and then plunge that down towards you. With this one, you want to be counting to three as soon as you see the animation and then roll on the three to avoid the attack. Sometimes after he's done this aerial plunge, he'll then go into the standing thrust attacks. And once again, he can sometimes do multiple standing thrust attacks. So just keep that in mind. And then he's also got a variation of this aerial plunge. And this one is a lot faster. With this variation, he'll kind of go up towards the top left hand corner of the screen and then do the aerial plunge towards you from up there. With this one I keep my eye on him as he goes up into the sky and then when I see him stop at the top I usually roll straight away as he does the plunge attack pretty much instantly as soon as he gets to the top. So rolling when he gets to the top of his climb up is usually a good time to roll. You can also do a lightning foot stomp. With this one, just try to time your roll exactly at the time that his foot stomps on the floor and you should roll through it nice and safely. You can also cast one from his hand. Once again, just try and time your roll precisely as the bolt hits the floor and you should roll safely through it. He's also got an attack where he'll stand still. He'll charge his weapon with lightning and then point his weapon to the sky, which will then summon a lightning bolt down on you. Whilst he's charging his weapon with the lightning, it's usually quite safe to get in one or two attacks. And then to avoid the lightning bolt that's going to be heading down towards you, you've got two main options. You can either try to time your roll and avoid the lightning bolt, which is usually about one second after he points his weapon up towards the sky, or for some reason the game has got some weird glitch here where you can just turn your camera away from the Nameless King as he points his weapon up towards the sky and then the lightning has no way to track your character and the lightning will just completely miss every single time. I've got absolutely no idea why this works, it just works. You can also try and be really cheeky here by getting in one or two attacks whilst he's charging his weapon with the lightning and then quickly turning your camera away before he points his weapon up to the sky and if you're fast enough you'll actually avoid the lightning as well as getting in your attacks. Also, just a quick tip here. If you find yourself in a bit of a pickle, you can actually just run far away from the Nameless King 
get some distance between you and him, and it should allow you enough time to pop an Estus Flask. And just in case anyone wasn't aware of this, if you hold down the down button on your D-pad, it will go to the first item that's on your quick items menu which for most people is usually the Estus Flask. So instead of panicking and trying to flick through all your items and get to the Estus Flask, if you just hold down the down button, it will auto flick over to your Estus. So you'll be 100% sure that your Estus is selected and then you can just press use item. Also, it's worth mentioning that the Nameless King can be staggered. So if you keep piling on the damage, look out for that stagger animation. You'll kind of fall down to one knee. If you do see that, make sure to run on up and get your critical strike. He's also got quite a long recovery animation after the critical strike. So whilst he's getting back up on his feet again, you could run up towards him and deliver more attacks. Or you could choose to use your Estus Flask if you needed healing. Or you could choose to use a Fire Resin or a Dark Resin if you wanted to reapply that. So there's quite a lot of information to take in with this boss fight, but ideally you want to be looking out for those safe and prime times to attack. With the King of the Storm, the safest and the best time is when he's standing and breathing fire. You want to be just by the side of his head, you can usually get in 4 attacks, sometimes 5 if you're lucky. And once again, with the Nameless King, those safe and prime times to attack are when he finishes his standing overhead slam that is not lightning charged. Just keep locked on, moving in an anti-clockwise direction, and then attack after that overhead slam. The other time is when he's finished his standing thrust attack, which we called thrust attack 3. Just take extra care to make sure that it is the last thrust in the thrust chain, as you can sometimes do those multiple thrusts. So be patient and look out for those prime times to attack. With enough practice, time and patience, you'll have this fight mastered in no time. If you want to stay in touch with me, all of my social medias and platforms are at Azavar. I've also got a Discord server, so feel free to join that if you want to chat. I've got loads more video game guides and boss guides on this channel, so feel free to check those out. I also do live streams. Feel free to come ask any questions or anything over in the live streams. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, make sure to like, subscribe and drop a comment. You could even share this video with someone that might find it useful. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, take care. If you enjoy my videos and you want me to release more videos per month, then the most direct and effective way to do that is support me on Patreon. You can find my Patreon page in the video description, and by supporting me there, that will allow me more time to create more videos and higher quality videos per month. So feel free to check that out if that's something that you're interested in.